Praise be to Jesus and Mary, and welcome to the Catholic Family Podcast. This is the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by Mandy and Holly. Let's begin our show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy. Happy to be back for another episode here on the Catholic Family Podcast. But before we jump into everything, we'll begin by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek and, and humble, humble of heart, heart make our hearts like God to thine. So, um, yeah, after my mom's... <laughs> what did you say at the end of last week's episode? And I said, remember, I said, whoa, wait to put that out. There. Oh, or if uh, I don't make it, I'm not here next week or yes, something. Yes, I something. I made a comment about my death. Death, yeah. Well, Whether she's here, folks. I made it through another. She week. made it through another. The good week. Lord. Not the good Lord has let me live another week. I just or denied me my death. death. Another week, however you want to look at it. The saints looked at it one way. The rest of us look at it the other. Well, way. I will. I will say I was watching. Um, uh, uh, the movie, I, you know what, it just comes up, Therese, and I don't know if that's the name of the actual movie, right. but it, uh, on the poster, it's got St. Teresa, and she's in a white veil, and it just says Therese with mm-hmm. flower petals. I think it's just, the movie's just called Therese. I could be wrong. But anyways, I was watching this movie about uh, St. Teresa, and uh, the the death scene in that movie was actually when she dies. I've never seen it. Yeah, well, so it was. It they sell it um, on Mary Macklin Queen oh, website, the DVD. So I I figured it was safe to watch, and um, yeah, like the, when she's dying, the death scene. You just whoever, whatever actress played her, um, she really nailed the happiness oh, good. part of it. You know, like it was very. It yeah, was a very beautiful a scene. It, I I didn't mind it. I thought it was very mm-hmm. nice. I think there was a few th- scenes where I was like, hmm. Eh. Yeah, so anyways, I just, uh, when we were talking, when you just mentioned that about that saints dying versus, mm-hmm. you know, us dying, that really struck me when I saw that scene in the movie that it was just done so beautifully. Um, anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have to keep that in our mind all the time. Like, that's what we're striving for. If right. we feel the attachment to this earth and that we can't leave it. Well, the, you know, well, and that's just it. And I, I, I heard this once, and I, you know what? I cannot remember who said it to me or where I heard it or, you know. But I, I struggled with being too attached to material things for a long time. And, um, you know, someone had told me that, you know, if, if you're thinking about and contemplating death and you're not ready to go at any moment, right. that means you're too attached yes. to the things of this world. Like, you should be ready to leave absolutely everything behind. And that goes for not just material possessions but people as well right oh definitely people you know like you Dude. you if you're striving for sanctity and you're striving to be with our lord and in heaven you need to be able to do and go at any time well i mean speaking as mothers too as mothers our biggest our biggest attachment is to our children right right so often the the thought of leaving our children you know, yes. it's very overwhelming. Like, you know, we feel like we can't do that. Like, what if I were to die and who is going to look after my children? But you, like, yeah, and you have, it took me a long while to realize that, that, you know, you you have to trust that God is doing what's best. Mm-hmm. Um, and that if you leave, like, you know, I'll, I'll use my own example. You know, I am in a mixed marriage and my husband is secular. And I did struggle with that, that, you know, if I were to die... Uh who's going to keep the faith for my children and I'm like so I would tell myself Lord keep me alive long enough till my kids are adults and I and I thought and I said because without me they may lose their faith but then I told myself no you cannot you cannot say that prayer anymore right like you cannot ask God for that you have to trust that you know God has it in his hand Yes. And God knows what he's doing. And if you die and your kids are still little kids, I'm talking to myself here. I was saying to myself, if you die, you have to trust that um, everything you've done up until that point. Mm-hmm. The, well, yeah. The one thing that you can remember, though, is you can think about St. Teresa, the little flower. Yeah. What did she say? She was going to spend her her time in heaven doing good, good on, on earth. earth. Yeah. Right? And I will send, send so, down a shower I mean, of roses. I, I have a little story to tell you years ago. Like, I'm talking like maybe 20 years ago. I knew a woman on Facebook. And she had five little children at the time. And um, she lost custody of those little children because um, 
well, I think I think her husband was very secular, and he and she came off sounding like a little bit of a nut job. Mm -hmm. And he was a professional too. He was a professional, and so um, you know with the with how the kids were to dress, the no television and the homeschooling and all this stuff. Remember, this is 20 years ago. And and the dad was a professional and she lost custody of those kids to the father. Yeah. And then on top of that, she got cancer mm -hmm. and she died. She's deceased now. So um, I can't actually remember her name, but may she rest in peace. And I thought in my head like, wow, what a circumstance. And right. this woman was very devout. Yeah in her beliefs and in her practices. And so what had happened was, and I thought, wow, God, you, you took this woman, the, her five children left with a father who's secular. Right. And I thought to myself, well, maybe you never know, like, you know, maybe the memory of a mother who's a saint might be better serving for these children than yeah. a mother here. Well, that that's exactly my point. We never know how God is going to use us. And just because you're dead, Yes. Doesn't mean he's done using, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, so that's why I stopped saying that prayer. And that's why, again, I, f I feel like I say this every podcast, but I really try to say that prayer, that quick little prayer. And I put it in the description of last video to resign myself to the divine will that whatever death God has destined for me, yeah. that I accept it. Right. You know, that no matter if it's now or in 40 years, 60 years, it doesn't matter because... That is what God has laid out for me. Right. And again, this all revolves back to confidence in God. Mm -hmm. Like confidence in the supernatural and confidence that, you know, all things work together for those who pray. Mm -hmm. Right. That So if, if you're praying, then the best possible things for you are happening, whether they seem rotten and evil and no good to us. Right. You know, they're mm -hmm. not because God, because we believe, we believe in the supernatural. We believe in God's holy providence. We believe in God's strength and power. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes we just have to keep telling ourselves that over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. We have to like, you need to keep that at the forefront of your mind, you know, like, and not to forget that because it is easy to just put in the back cobwebs or your mind. Right. And you know, it's there, but you just kind of like, you know, you forget. Right. You, you you need to bring it to the front every once in a while to remind yourself. And um, as I uh, I will sit, I will share this little story. I didn't I haven't even told my mother this yet because it just happened this morning. But I was so I we're practicing for Easter and I have a piano at home, but it's just not the same as going to the church and playing on the organ. So I took the kids to school this morning and I had an appointment at eleven. And I asked Father if I could go to the church and practice on the organ um, in between. And so I dropped the kids off at school. I drove all the way to the church. I was two minutes from the church and I realized my church key, my key to open the church because no one was going to be there, was at home. Oh. And I, normally I'd be like fuming, but I was like, no, I said, this is happening for a reason. So I whipped the car around, I turned the car around and I went all the way back home. This is like 25 minutes just to get this key. Because I said in my head, I said, I told myself that I was going to visit the Blessed Sacrament today, first and foremost, over practicing at the organ. It was, you know, I said, I'm going to go visit the Blessed Sacrament. I'm going to practice on the organ. And I could have easily just been like, oh, well, well forget I'll it, forget you it. know. Yeah. But I thought, no, you said you were going to do this. So you turn your butt around and you go back home you get that key and you come all the way back and the whole time I was driving I was getting very annoyed not right. angry but annoyed at myself that I forgot that key Man, you're an idiot what you're a waste yeah of time. so the whole time I was driving I just kept going uh, all affliction comes directly from there yeah. <laughs> but like not like I had to like really tell myself yeah. You're doing this and it, you're breaking your will because you said you were doing this. And that was a big, like, normally, I have to be honest, I would have just said, well, I forgot the key. Oh, well, I'll go whatever, do whatever. Oh, I'll go shopping until my appointment, you know. But I thought, no, you're doing this and this is an affliction and it was your own stupidity. So you're doing it, you know. But it was very, very hard. Right. Well, I, I'm sure you'll get some graces for that. Why? Well, 100% you will. You I know? hope so because, but then I was like, the whole time I was driving, I was like, 
gripping the steering wheel and I was like, say it again because you're getting very annoyed. All affliction comes directly. Well, I mean, that's what we have to do. But that's that, that is do. really like, there's not, and my whole point of the story is like, you know, we shouldn't be so down on ourselves and maybe I shouldn't say this, but you know, like to think that every moment is going to be this blissful, saintly, happy moment. No. Like when you're struggling and you're really struggling to overcome something, the gr- to me, I could be wrong, but I feel like the graces are in there that if you're really honest with yourself and you're like, I really don't want to do this. Yeah. But I'm going to offer it up and I'm going to try to be as joyful as I can. It's in the trying that we succeed. That's I actually think. what you're talking about right there is called fidelity to grace. Well, I didn't feel very graceful, but. <laughs> no, like um, it's um, if you do that, um, that novena to St. Joseph. And you meditate four times during the day on the on the four different. Uh, I think it was four, not three. I think it's four. I lost a little card, but I used to do it quite per- periodically. And the one was Saint Joseph had perfect fidelity to grace. Yes, yeah. That means um, that means if he and when you have fidelity to grace, and I didn't know this at the time because I was like fidelity to grace. What does the heck does that mean? Yeah. Like I mean. How do, you, how do you do that? Like, yeah. I don't even know what it means. Never mind how I do it, right? But it means you get an inspiration and you follow up immediately. immediately. Uh-huh, yeah. Immediately, because that's grace. That's, that's, that's grace saying to you, go back and get the key and come back here. Well, and you know what I kept telling myself? I kept saying to myself, five minutes with the Blessed Sacrament is better than none. Right. You know, like this, this may seem, and then I kept putting in my mind, I'm doing this for our Lord. Yeah. You know, and I thought, I may not have much time to practice on the organ as I thought, but the most important part is that I go back there and I keep the promise that I made to the Blessed yeah. Sacrament. St. Joseph, you know? Joseph had perfect fidelity to the Blessed Virgin, perfect fidelity to Jesus, perfect fidelity to grace, and I believe the last one was perfect fidelity to resignation to death oh but do you want to hear the true real kicker in the whole thing what when i got to the church father was there and the door was unlocked oh my gosh <laughs> you should have gone to the church and I tried know. it i thought i forgot the most important no but it taught me something what what to teach you all affliction comes directly from the hand of god right right there like there's you know sh- should i have continued on and went the extra five minutes just to d- see because i wasn't I, this isn't going to make any sense to anybody because they don't know where we are. I was still probably about eight to ten minutes from the church. Oh. Right? When I turned around. Okay, right. So, so I was like. Playing, uh, I was playing. Do a, I take do a I, chance or do I not take a chance? And I thought, and I thought at the end of the day, if, you know, but the thing is, though, is Father, had, I had asked Father if I could go to the church and he said, yeah, it would be fine. They wouldn't be there. Right. So I kind of was like, I thought, well, and the real kicker of it is I did drive by the school and father's car wasn't there. Oh. So when I, when I knew, I knew, anyways, it's a whole long story that won't make sense to anybody that's not local. But, and then when I drove by that school to go home and his car wasn't there, I was like, I bet your father is still at the church. Mm -hmm. So I knew, I knew walking into it. But I don't think I did it for nothing. Is my point? No, is you're. It's a. Grace. That's why you have to see. It's a grace. It's a. It's a great. It's a. It's a great grace. Because and you, you know, put yourself out. And you know what? By resigning myself to God's holy will, when I got to the church and I saw that Father was still there, I actually let out like a little joyful chuckle. Yeah. Like, oh God, you're funny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I wasn't mad. Yeah. You know, I wasn't. I was just like. Oh, good one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right. So, so, so I, 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 what I'm saying is, is I feel like I overcame a little bit of my anger because I do struggle with anger. Right. You know? Well, anger is, and I was actually, because um, we're, we're doing the total consecration to Mary, and in my meditation book, there was some, a lot of talk about anger and interior anger. And I, yeah. and basically, as I said to somebody, anger is nothing more than you not getting your own way. Right. Yeah, precisely. Right, like, I mean, you have to find, you know, there can be anger at a wrongdoing. But generally speaking, when you're angry, it's because you didn't get your own way. Right, right. Or something and uh, something came up to, you know, stop you from doing what you wanted. or And even when, you, when you're not getting your own way, even with other people, like, they're doing things that bother you. 
Yeah. Or they're, they're interfering in your own way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like, and even if it's, even if it's like, um, you know, maybe a spouse that won't go to church. Mm-hmm. Well, you're angry at that. Like, you're not giving God. Yeah. You know what God is owed, and so you're angry about that, right? But you're also angry because you're not getting what you want. Right. You want God to get what's owed, right? Yeah. Right. So it's very, very important that you think about, you know, well, that everybody actually has free will, and God allows things. things. So if yeah. God allows things, who are you to who argue? Who are you to stop there and be like? Who are you to argue with what God allows? Right. I mean, these are all thoughts that I've had over the years that just have helped me deal with things. Right. Deal with my. Ang- I had awful anger problems. Yeah, maybe oh. it's hereditary. No, I'm just it's kidding. hereditary for everybody. It's called sin. I know. I know. <laughs> you know? It's called yes, sin, good ladies. Point. You know. If you have uncontrollable anger, I know that we, um, and I don't really like to talk about this too much because, um, you know, we have a difference of opinion as opposed to the world, you know, Mm -hmm. because they think that we slap, let it out. We slap titles on these things. Right. And that makes it a medical condition, Mm -hmm. not a sin. Yes. Right. (laughs) And so I don't really like to talk about it because I don't like to be, um, Ruffling feathers? Ruffling feathers. But anger is a sin. Yes. It is. You know? Yeah. And you don't, I mean, and you can, here's, well, here's the thing. You can, you can get to the pearly gates and say, I'm sorry, God, I had a medical condition. Mm -hmm. Just think about this scenario for a minute. Mm -hmm. I I had all this anger, but it was really out of my control. It was a medical condition, had nothing to do with me. I mean, God's going to say, okay, that's good. It was a medical condition. But that don't make you a saint then. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like you don't, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you are renouncing mm-hmm. your path to sanctity mm-hmm. by accepting a medical condition. condition. That's yeah. in the temporal. Yeah. You know, like that, that somebody temporal has told you. Yes. You have. Right. Yeah. So let's. Oh, uh, that speaking of which, I just want to say this really quickly because there in the St. Teresa movie. Yeah. Because I, a priest told me once, well, he said in a sermon, and actually I've heard the story many times about St. Teresa at the washing, um, doing the laundry. Where she's annoyed. And the saint the, the, is flicking the clothes really angrily and uh, all the uh, water's going on her. Yeah. So the they saint's ha- not doing this. Sister, sorry. The sister. Another sister. Yeah. Did I say saint? Yeah. Sorry. Another nun is at the washing the well, and she's washing her clothes, and she's flicking her clothes really harshly, and all the water's flying on St. Teresa. Right. And a priest told me in a sermon once that St. Teresa would purposely go and wash her clothes beside this nun as an act of reparation and penance um, and offer it up. And I always struggle with that because, you know, St. Teresa did that, and she did it very joyfully. She right. was happy to be there. Right. Truly and happy. Not like making a big deal, like, I'm going to go stand beside this nun and get these graces and whatever. They had this scene, and the, they had that scene in, in this the movie? movie. Yeah. How did, and nun, How did it go? Oh, she's just... Well, what it was in this particular movie, the nun was teaching St. Teresa how to wash the habits or whatever they were watching. Yeah. And she had this stick, and she's beating the clothes with the stick <laughs> and the water's going everywhere <laughs> and she's like you really gotta beat it like or whatever she says really hard she says you try <laughs> and saint Teresa, she's so kind and so gentle and then she takes the stick and she gives it a little whack and then some of the water <laughs> flies up on the other nun anyways it was just <laughs> i remember it's funny that i've heard the story many times in a sermon but then to actually see it in a movie. Right. The people, you know? That saints actually mm-hmm. deliberately put themselves in positions Positions. where somebody would aggravate them. Yeah, and aggravate them and soak them with water. You know, just you know, so they could who, give something to offer up. Uh, yeah. And just think about that. We, every day, we don't deliberately go looking for it, but there's a whole lot of people in, in our area aggravating us. Yeah. We don't have to go out and look for it. Yeah. And uh, I did just want to mention before we go any further, we do have some um, construction going on at my house today. So hopefully whatever's going on in the background, sawing and hammering, isn't too loud and obnoxious. Right. We don't have another chance to do the, the podcast. So it's either put up with this or... Or you no ladies pod- don't get to hear from us. <laughs> you don't get to hear from us this week. Anyway, so yeah. So or 
what we were just talking about. Be aggravated Ooh, with this. Be aggravated with it. Yeah. Look at we're already giving you opportunity to start. <laughs> <laughs> and if any, and I know you people are married. A lot of you are married with children out there, so you have plenty of opportunity. Yes. Yeah. You know. So. so, anyways, well, maybe should we dive into our book here? Right. Oh, I left it. Can you reach it? I left yeah. it. I had to get up to leave suddenly for a minute, but the, we're back. Um, we're back to uh, raising our children. Right. Um, okay. Do you remember where we left yes, off? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you tell me? That might be helpful. Number 14. Number 14. I thought so. Okay. So, we'll just dive right in here. This chapter is um, Mission and Duties of Young Women on Maternity and Its Duties. So... Quote, but to form the habit of obedience in your child, you must not only oppose his whims, you should have none yourself. You should never expect from him anything unjust or unreasonable. Never command him while you are under the influence of passion. Never punish him when excited by impatience or anger, lest he consider the punishment as a personal revenge. Promise him nothing that you cannot grant, and never threaten him with a chastisement which you are not determined to inflict if he deserves it, end quote. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the first thing there right off the hop is, is uh, you know, to not to not have any whims yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, so you don't give in to the child's whims, but you have to be the example of not having whims yourself. Right. You know, like, oh, you have to have this, or you have to have that, or you're, you know, you, you, um, usually I think when we have whims, that makes us very flaky. Yeah. Because everything revolves around what we want for at that particular moment. Right, right. Right? So so when we have whims, it throws out our consistency. Mm -hmm. Right? So, okay, um, these are the rules, except for right now because I have a whim to do this. Right. So we let all the, the rules... Hey, yeah, I get what you're saying. ...go by the wayside, yeah. right? Like, I mean, and it does ha it does happen. Well, I'll use the... Remember, we said a few podcasts ago, I'll use the phone as the example that we right. bring up constantly, but it is the perfect form of example. You know, when you tell your children that, you know, the internet is bad and to stay off the internet and to... Yes. You know, okay, but then if you have a whim to be on Instagram right. watching... And I'm saying this because I realized it about myself, that I was constantly telling my children yeah. that these things were wrong, but then I it was okay for me to sit... So, I mean, the biggest thing you have in the ability to control your children is in the, in the, the ability to control, control yourself, yourself first. Yeah. Like, if you have the ability to control yourself first, then you will very likely super exceed the ability to control your children. Right. And most women, when they can't control their children, it's because they can't control themselves yes. first. And also, a very important thing that I that often we forget is to not act or well it says to not command him while well, you are under the influence of passion never punish him when excited by impatience or anger yeah. and that is something again that I really struggle with because the thing is is when I when I'm angry with my children and I act on that right away um instinctively you act and you try to punish when you're angry mm -hmm. you just come out looking like a well I do anyways a well, screaming banshee <laughs> you know yeah, and they, like they know you're unfair you're unjust you're just being personal like it said that you're just being mean you're just yeah. being mean like the, the child actually sees no they do not they don't connect. see the correction they don't see the correction that they were actually doing something wrong mm -hmm. what they see is that you're mean and you're angry, and you're and just you're yelling angry. at them. And you're just yelling at them, and they never do anything wrong. I mean, I've heard that a million times. I, I wasn't doing anything wrong, and I remember one particular incident, incident with uh, Ava last year. Oh. And she, she got in big, big trouble over something, and she was really mad because mm -hmm. you were really mean. Oh, yes, yeah. is that what she said? You know, oh, well, no, she was really mad, and she came over, and she... It was it was it was so bad that you had, oh yes that yeah, you yeah. had to bring her to my house yeah right and so so she was she was not having it like she was no, just she... not having it and I looked up at her and I said Ava I said you do understand because like, I was very calm yeah I said I was you not. do understand that you broke all the rules and she just looked at me. Because I was very calm. Right. right, I maybe didn't convey that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was very calm, and she looked at me, and she said, and I said, 
yes. I said, you broke all the rules. What do you want your mother to do? You yeah. know, I said, every, I said, I can stand here and list about 10 rules you broke. Yeah. Trying to do what you wanted to do. Yeah. And then that, it just like. A light bulb. A light bulb went off, right? Yeah. And up until that moment, she hadn't even contemplated that. No, because all she could, all she couldn't get over how mean I was. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, that was a bad one for you yeah no i know <laughs> there's been many bad ones <laughs> well you know what i actually i'll tell you, you know what i start doing to my kids because i'm really i am and if you haven't guessed this by this podcast and the one last week i am really trying to bring a sense of calm and peace to my home and get over my anger and my flippant reactions you know so the because ki- you know kids breed off of that yeah they do and what you put into your home they're gonna breed off of that so my I have two children only two children a boy and a girl and there's five years between them so there's a lot of bickering and yes. there's a lot of fighting and there's a lot of he's annoying me and she won't play with me and she because she's fifteen and he's ten and and I said to them the one day when I was calm I said you two are all you have this is all God has given us this is all God has given you. One brother, one sister. You've got to start being kind to one another. And I said, if you cannot be kind to each other, how can you expect to go out in the world and be kind to everybody else, right? Right. So they do this thing. My son can be very annoying. Oh, pestery, yes. right? Oh, little pestery boy. So the other day he was chasing around the house and they're screaming like banshees. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting at, uh, angry, but I got to put a stop to this and I have to do it calmly. So I was washing dishes and I just turned around and I said, you two need to stop now. Stop and look at me. And they both turned and they both looked at me. I said, you apologize to her. Say, Ava, I am sorry. Ava, you apologize to him and say, Douglas, I am sorry. For what? I don't care what you're doing, but it's not nice. Yeah. And then I said, and then both of you look at me and repeat after me. And I went, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. And I said, that is for our Lord. Now continue on. Yeah. And they both <laughs> walked away from the table. <laughs> and they both were just like, huh? <laughs> like, you know, because normally, like, but, and then I, I realized, like, you're not, like, if you, if you turn around and you scream and yell at them, you're only adding to the noise and the aggravation. Right. You have to stop it dead in its track. And the only way you can do that is with calmness, uh-huh. firm calmness. Right. I'm going to use the word firm, okay? And so then now, what, ever since I did that, they start up and I turn and I look at them and I go and I beat my chest three times uh-huh. and I say, do it. Yeah. And they turn and they look at each other and they go, me Koopa, me Koopa, me Maxima Koopa. And they carry on. Right, right. And my husband was like, Koopa Hoopa? What? <laughs> I was like, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> and I, well, I just said, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, because he doesn't know. But doesn't anyways, know. <laughs> it's just, it's just something that I realized I had to do to stop right, the constant well, bickering in like the, in this meditation that I was doing on anger like it talks about um, an unjust anger right and I think if we don't um, if we don't approach things properly like even in regards to our children mm-hmm. like I wasn't when I was reading it I wasn't thinking of children right but I mean even in regards to children if you don't approach it properly you're coming at it from an unjust place right because you're more at it's not so much that what they were doing was wrong was that was that is that what they were doing was aggravating you yeah right so that's what makes it unjust right and that's why you lose your cool right right you're like i you know i'm being so aggravated right now that my mind is going to pop right <laughs> yeah i just want to wash these dishes in peace <laughs> <laughs> you know you know, so this is the thing. And the other thing, though, this was a big thing. And um, something uh, somebody actually mentioned, I, th- I think this was that somebody mentioned on our last week's podcast, is to promise nothing you're not going to do. And that works both ways. Oh, like, for good and bad. like For no. good and bad. Right. Right? So, I mean, especially bad. Like, I mean... If I've heard this once, I've heard it a million times, you'll be in this time. Stop doing that or Santa Claus isn't coming. 
you know and i'm just like okay lady okay, we, we all, all know, know santa claus is still coming yeah you know like i mean you want to talk about the most empty threat in, in the, the whole world. entire world yeah. Or stop doing that or you're not having a birthday party. Yeah. Well, you and know? that's my mom. You told us that too. Like as we, you know, like recently, you know, like do not give your kids a punishment you are not going to follow through on. Right. Ever. Yeah. And if you throw it out, be prepared to follow through. So don't throw out anything you don't want to follow through on. Yeah. Because I got caught in that once and it was not pretty. I can't even remember what it was, but I threw it out there and I was like, you got to follow through on that. And. Lo and behold, they they messed up. up. They mucked it up, and I had to fall. They didn't through. take you serious, and it was heart wrenching. Yeah, I can't even remember what it was. Something really big I had to take away from them, but I I could barely do it. But I knew I had to do it because my mother told me. Yeah, and also, I didn't listen, and I threw out something that I wasn't prepared. To. <laughs> also, too, it, it's it really it's really helpful if you have your set punishments lined up previous in your mind. And mm-hmm. I used to always pick things I wanted to get rid of anyway, so they yeah. were easy to follow through with, right? Like, I mean, when you guys were little, you used to watch a show called The Power Rangers. Oh, yes. And I hated that show. Yeah. And I didn't, I mean, this is a long time ago, so I didn't actually know why I hated it. But what I knew was that it made you very loud, very riotous, very fighty and rambunctious and, like, total, like, animals, right? Yeah. So every time you watch this show, your behavior yeah. was affected. So I had no problem banning that show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know, so so you pick something you want to get rid of anyway. Right, right. And so it's easy for you to say, okay, that's it, enough of that. that we're done here. We're done with that. You're not yeah. getting to do that anymore, right? So, I mean, I, I had a little incident in, at Mass a couple weeks ago. Yeah. With a nephew who mm-hmm. was banging the... Back of the pew. <laughs> back, back of the pew, and he had done it the Sunday before, and... He, he didn't seem to be listening to correction. So I got up out of my pew, and I, <laughs> I walked over to him, and I leaned over and whispered in his ear, and I said, you stop that right now. <laughs> I said, are you, or, I said, you do that again, and I am coming back here and dragging you out of here, and you are going to sit with Aunt Mandy at the front. You didn't laugh when you said it. No, I did not laugh. <laughs> She's was, just laughing. Ridiculous. I was very stern. Yeah. Very stern. Well, even so much so that after Matt, because I, I happened, I had my own little St. Teresa moment because I happened to be sitting in the very pew he was kicking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like right vibrating up my back. And I, and I just was like, this is unbearable. This is unbearable. And it wasn't stopping. So I went, I asked my mom after mass, I said, what did you say to him to get him to stop? Well, well, this was the thing, right? And then I went back and I, and I said a little prayer. I said, please, Lord, do, do not, not make me <laughs> have, to, have to follow through with my threat. Yeah. Because I knew that if he did, I would you have to. to. Yeah. Right? And I did not really want to do that. To I didn't want to pew. make a spectacle in the middle of mass. I didn't want all the things those things yeah. to happen. But he did stop. And, yeah. he, and you know, and because I was very harsh, and I'm only the aunt, yeah. you know, I um, after mass, I went down. At, we went down to the basement, and I said to him, I said, thank you for, you know, being respectful and doing listening that and, and listening. And I, gave, I said, here, this, here's a toonie for being a good boy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know it. You don't, in that, I don't actually think you should reward good people. Mm-hmm. You should never say, one thing you should never say is if you don't if do you, that, I'll give you a toonie. Yeah, like if you stop doing what you're doing and you be a good boy, I'll reward you. Like I, I've never been one to, to believe that, you know, you get rewarded for doing what you're supposed to be doing. doing. Yeah. But in this circumstance, because I'm only the aunt, an aunt a great aunt, you know, yeah. I'm not the mom. I'm not like, and I didn't want him to be like, oh, you know, there's Aunt Mandy, the, the, old, the old witch, you know? The old <laughs> you know, like I didn't want that to be the case, you know. So I wanted to, you know, kind of give him a reward oh, for yeah. being, and and you know what? He's not banged. He's not banged the back of a pew since. since yeah, no. So you let's know. hopefully that was the end of it. So hopefully that works. But that, but remember, ladies. If you say it, you must, must follow through. You must follow through. So you must pick something that you're capable of following through with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so quote, he should entertain the highest opinion, not only of your goodness of heart, but also and especially of your intelligence and strength of will. If you wish, therefore, on any occasion to get rid of his in importunities, do not employ deception or those ridiculous tales by which mothers and servants imprudently frighten children, and which give rise to groundless prejudices, errors, and puerile fears, which time and education scarcely ever remove, end quote. Mm -hmm. So ridiculous tales. Yeah, right. So no deceptions are ridiculous. Well, you know, like go to sleep or the boogeyman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the monster in the closet. Yeah. Like, first of all, you say stuff like that. A, it's not true. Yeah. And B, like you're doing damage to kids that's going to stick with them their whole right. life. And then plus, you're you're also setting it up for them never to believe anything you, you ever never say. say. Yeah. Like what you just make up and you talk nonsense. Yeah. Like, you're the parent. You don't want to be somebody who talks nonsense. Right. So what comes out of your mouth must always be the truth. Right. Yeah. Right? Like, it must always be the truth. Like, um, you know, like, you know, one can talk about Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy yeah. and the Easter Bunny and all that stuff as being wildly ridiculous, ridiculous. tales. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say either or. I know people don't do it, and I know people who do do it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm just going to say I did it. I mean, we, you had always Santa Claus. <laughs> we had did. Easter Bunny because that's what we did back in the day. But, you know, maybe the new me would be. The you, well, I will tell me. you, we, we did it for a, a long time. And, you know, mostly in part on, in well, I was away from the church, as we have mentioned. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, secular family, secular in-laws, you know, people that, you know, had an influence. Right. You know, I hate to say it, but they do. Yes. Like, you know, you walk into your mother-in-law's house, what did you get from Santa Claus? You know, or, yeah. or even my husband, for that very matter, you know, the minute we had children, it was like, oh, you got to get him a gift from Santa Claus. It wasn't even a question, you know, and I yeah. just did it. But going back if i could go back i would have i would now knowing what i know now would choose not to do it not to even yeah. start it i would not entertain it if you i know. could i mean we did but i mean if you want your relationship to be one one of truth like you can give gifts mm -hmm. and you can do you can even do saint nicholas well, yeah the saint we i still do the saint nicholas yeah you boots. can do saint nicholas um, but you have to do it with a proper understanding. Okay. Yes. Right. Not not that we're honoring Saint Nicholas and fictitious, you know, boogeymen that don't yeah. exist, and you're acting like they're real. And they come down and yeah, come through <laughs> you the know, chimney. like so. <laughs> so um, I remember um, years ago. Uh, um, remember when Mel Gibson got in all that trouble? Mm -hmm. He got in a lot of trouble from drunk driving, and he said some slurs. Mm -hmm against a certain race of people mm -hmm. i think we all know where i'm talking about but anyway so then it came out because he did that on who his father was mm -hmm. his father hutton gibson mm -hmm. and um that his father was you know had problems with the numbers mm -hmm. over there in germany you know yeah. and stuff like that right so he was he was really so he they pushed mel gibson's back against the wall for right. him to denounce his father. Right. And I remember, and this really struck with me, what he said was he wouldn't denounce his father. He said, my father has never lied to me. Oh. Yeah, that's what wow. he said. And they, they, and he wouldn't say anything else. Yeah, wow. You know, and I thought in my head, and I remember once your sister said, well, if you want the truth, go ask mom. Yeah. If you don't want to hear the truth, don't, don't go ask, ask her. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you want... You want your your children to view you. You want your you want your children to say that about you. Yes. My mother has never lied to me. Yes. You know, my mother tells me the truth. Right. Yeah. You know, my father tells me the truth. I mean, you know, we can't make dads do do dad things, but we as moms can do what we do. We do what we do and we have to be somebody whose word means mm -hmm. something. Yeah. So we don't make up ridiculous stories. We don't put boogeymans under beds and we don't, you know, yeah. you know, the guy from the black hole is coming I mean, and you've heard that too, like in the parking lot. Someone's you know, kinda come get you and yeah. you know, like and they're yelling all kinds of crazy things yeah. and I'm just like, holy moly come on people yeah. you know like you're not doing anything but looking a fool yeah 
Okay, quote, you will be useful to your children only so far as you inspire them with that respect and fear which spring from confidence and love and render the practice of obedience easy, end quote. Right. So again, it's, it's you have, they have to have, I mean, to me, to get the confidence, they have to believe you to be somebody who doesn't lie. Yeah. That always has their best interest at heart. Yeah. Like that's how you get the confidence. Yeah. Right. And, and also the respect and the fear, right? Um, there was a, like a meme that said, never let your children see you tremble. Mm -hmm. Like you, even if you're afraid. Yeah. You cannot show your children that you are afraid. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like yeah. you have to be the source of no fear. Yeah. Like don't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't run and dive under the coffee table when you think someone knocks on the window and push your kids out of the way. Because yeah. I did that once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't do that. They have to, they have to view that. you as the fearless leader. leader. I know. And you know what? I've come a long way because I will tell you, we do live out in the middle of nowhere. And last night we were saying the rosary in the front room. And we have this big open window and it was very dark. And the moon was very low and it was orange. Yeah. Almost like, you know, like, look how it looks on the night of the agony in the garden. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, and like, wow, yeah. it, it was very, I will use the word creepy looking, okay? So we're saying the rosary, and I I kind of, not was distracted, but I looked out the window for a brief minute. I saw the moon, and I was like, oh, that's really creepy. Hail Mary. Better say another Hail Mary. <laughs> but I was like, do not show, and then I did it really quickly, and my son was like, what is she looking at? And I just went right back to praying because I was like, you cannot act like you're afraid. afraid to be in here, especially when you're praying the rosary, you know? Like, So I just carried on, but I knew he was looking at what I was looking at. But anyways, um, yeah, so. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be a person. And I know that that's difficult because, um, you know, there are things that kind of spook us. Oh, yeah. Right? So, I, I can be very afraid sometimes. You know, I mean, I was, uh, I had to adjust myself after my husband died. Did I talk about this before? About, yeah, being in the house by yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, and we're out in the you middle of nowhere, Jesus too. You watch Jesus Nazareth every Right, night. you know, and I just kept, and this is, this is the, personally, this is the way I have overcome everything in my whole entire life, is I find a saying and I stick with it. Mm-hmm. You know, one of my favorites is all affliction comes mm -hmm. directly from the hand of God. Well, Be careful in finding fault in God's holy providence. providence, right? I say that. Evil does the work of God. You know, like if, if somebody were to come in here and kill me, God would want that. That's so who I am I to argue? Oh, speaking of that. Okay. That Maria Goretti story. Yes. Did, did you watch it? I know. You were supposed to send it to me. I can't oh, okay. Find it. Well, we might going to have to talk about this another day, but I was listening to her whole and complete entire story. And yeah, my mom was telling me, and, and it's it more than just she was stabbed. More involved 14. than she was stabbed fourteen times and forgave, yeah. forgave him on her deathbed. Like what she endured was mind blowing. Yeah, like absolutely mind blowing. There, there's a video. Somebody did a video on it, and I was listening to it, and I was like, oh, "Holy smokes! There is a little girl with no fear." Yeah, like yeah. no fear, and here she's being murdered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, well, I want to watch it, so send it to me. Yeah. Well, anyway, if you, you might want to look up her story, I can't, I can't uh, remember exactly where, but I was because I said we've we've heard that story for a long time, and you know, it's always been yeah, she was stabbed fourteen times and she was murdered and she forgave her murderer, mm -hmm. and like that seemed to be the whole sum of it. Yeah. And yeah. It, it was like no, it was maybe um, Lisa Davis can do a, a quick. Feast day, quick take. A feast day, quick take on her yeah. because it's pr it was pretty intensive. Yeah. Okay. Quote, take notice that God in the precept which points out our obligations to our parents does not command us to love them because doubtless he considered this recommendation useless, but he commands us to honor them. End quote. All right. So we have to honor our parents. Um with, with uh, what does that say again? Because I yeah, think that I didn't make read it one it more time. It's very hard to read. Take notice that God, in the precept which points out our obligation to our parents, does not command us to love them, because doubtless, He considered considered this recommendation useless, 
but he commands us to honor them, end quote. Oh, so you you yes. you are not commanded to love, it's not to love your parents, it's to honor them. Right. Honor thy father and mother. It does not, it very specifically does not say love, it says honor. Right. And love and honor are very different. Right. Uh, well, the one thing he said is that he considered that... That doubtless. You know, kind of... Or the useless, sorry. Useless. Right? Because, I mean, and this is... This is uh, very important for when you're raising your children. Because I want right now everybody who's listening to this mm -hmm. to think about the relationship they have with their parent. Not with their children, with their parent. Now, I'm going to guess that a few of you have very good relationships with Their your parents, parents, but I'm going to second guess that the majority of you do not, right? That, um, that uh, you find your mother or your father or both equally annoying and aggravating, right? I will remain silent. You <laughs> <laughs> This is very awkward for me, mother. <laughs> But I'm anyway, just <laughs> and the thing is, the reason this, and this is just the way it goes. So we have to remember this because we're looking at our children and they are going to do that to us. Right. So the way, way you look at your parents, like, and, and if you, if you manage to have a good relationship with your children, with mm -hmm. your parents, you're very, very fortunate. Because like I said, I do, I do believe the majority do not. If I, the majority of people that I've talked to um, lament madly about their parents, about their this or their that or the way they were raised. Or, I mean, the biggest thing is they harbor all kinds of ill will about the way they were raised. Mm -hmm. You know, that their parents did this or their parents did that. I mean, there's n narcissistic, toxic parent. Like, you, you just hear it over and over and over again. And that is, unfortunately, that's the norm. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're, you're doing the norm. So what happens when you were, um, and I know this from a fact, like, and I had a great, I had a great relationship with my parents. I didn't have a bad one. Um... But what happens is you believe, you, you take the whole entire way you were raised, and when you raise your children, you are not going to raise your children the way your parents raised you with all those mistakes. Right. Right. You'll just make different ones. Right. <laughs> but this is the way people think. So you can't be delusional or prideful to... To not understand that when those children grow up, when your children grow up, they are probably going to harbor the same, you know, resentments towards you as their parent. Right. So we have a tendency to believe we're doing everything right. So therefore, our children are, we're going to grow up with the, these children that just love us. When I think that the, when I read this, what I feel like the author is leading into the way I'm understanding it is because he's talking about raising children and then all of a sudden he's talking about your parents and honoring and loving them. But I think he, I mean, I may be wrong because I haven't really read on, but I think this is important to note because a lot of times when we're raising children, we have this, this fear of correcting them or telling them what to do because we want their love so bad. Right. You don't need their love. They love you. Right. That's why God did not command them to love you. And that's why it says this recommendation is useless because they do love you. Right. So do not be afraid to correct and uh, straighten, them, straighten out. them out, for lack of a better word, because they're commanded to honor you. Right. You don't have to worry about the love. And that's where we see, you know, uh, the generations, parents that were so harsh. Yes. And then we got your generation which was so wishy that was so wishy-washy so i'm not going to do what my parents did to me to yes. my kids right right but really they forgot not forgot they i mean this is the world we're talking about so you know they they're missing the precepts of the church and they're missing the fact that you can correct your children you can straighten them out and they will still love you right you don't need to worry about them loving you Right, so right. put that out of your that, mind exactly and do right. your job as a parent because and stop worrying about being their friend and being loved. Yes. And that's why I, that's where I think the world is so messed up because we have so many parents 
who put this value of love of their children loving them over everything and not correcting them. And also, too, I, I do believe that everything is so twisted because um, a lot of times parents are doing things because they don't, they feel, they're, they've just messed everything up. Like everything yeah. is so messed up that they think, you know, their parents were too mean and too yeah. harsh. Mm -hmm. There was that movie I made you watch. Remember the young girl? Yes. That showed the three generations. Yeah. yeah. And the mother, what, the mother was the drunk. The grandmother. Was a, grandmother was the drunk. And was a drunk, but she was harsh and mean. Mm. And, and the, and the, the daughter, she, um, she was raising her daughter to be her best, best friend. friend. She was not making all the mistakes her mother made. And, the and in turn, she ruined her daughter. And in turn, she ruined her daughter because by the time the daughter was 15, Teen, she would have, she nothing, couldn't, to she would have nothing to do with the mother and she couldn't stand her. And the mother was just in shock. Like, all I want to be is your friend. You know, as I've done, every, like, again, in shock, which is what happens a lot of the time, yeah. because they've done everything to raise these children mm -hmm. so that we can have this great, stable relationship. Yeah. I mean, in in my mind, um, you know, those years, those teenage years were so rocky. Oh, yeah. yeah sometimes you just have to live through them and yeah. then they come back. Well, and I, because I will tell you with my daughter, you know, I, I've had many instances over the last little while, she's 15 and, you know, I have to correct her and she is like looking at me like I am the worst thing on the You're planet. Like, a demon. like, like, why are you doing this to me? How dare you? But you know what? I'm going to tell you two seconds later, she comes back in the room and wants to tell me something or is all happy or whatever, because she loves me. Yeah. It's not commanded to her. Yeah. But what is commanded is that she has to honor me. And that is how God has chosen to, uh, you know, yeah. what's the word I'm looking for? That's how God has chosen. He know what well, basically what the off author said. God knows it is useless for him to command people to love their parents. Yeah. Because they just do anyways. And I know I know there are situations out there that, you know, parents are evil and whatever. But I'm going to tell you, I was reading a story popped up in my news feed um, before Lent. And it was a, it was, it's a real story. It's a daughter whose mother was so sick and twisted, she convinced her daughter that she had a disability. Yes. Yeah. Have you heard of that? I can't I remember her name. I have heard of that story. And anyways, so anyways, the daughter, and she lied to people and she got all this money and whatever. Um, but the daughter met, ended up meeting somebody online, mm -hmm. a guy that convinced her to be her girlfriend, and then she told this guy to come and kill her mother. She served prison time for this, and she's out now. She just recently got out. But they asked her, do you regret having this guy kill your mother? Uh -huh. And she said she would do anything to have her mother back. With all her sick and twisted stuff she did to her, she yeah. said, I would give anything anything to see yeah. my mother well, again because that's the thing right like you know like up here in canada we have a thing called children's aid yeah that comes in a take and takes um children away from, from families and abusive awful situations si quote unquote awful situations. and um the children aren't really happy about that no. like they don't want to be like they may be living with an abusive parent or an alcoholic parent or whatever it is they don't want to be removed from that parent. They just want They that, want you to fix their parent. They just want their parent to be better. Right. To not be mean to them. And and a lot of times, um, there's a lot of psychological damage that is done to children. And they forever live their whole life trying to seek the approval of a bad parent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, um, I mean, these things happen. I mean, it's, what, it's especially what happens in a world without God. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, the people don't take their situation seriously or the responsibility serious. Yeah. Or, or, you know, you have one messed up parent who raises a messed up kid who raises a messed up kid. You know, like it's just a cycle well, of messed up. And let's be real. There are saints out there that had messed up parents. Yes. Saint Dymphana. Yes. Total mental illness. Yeah. You know, like, so you can't sit there and go, my parents are messed up and I hate them. Like, they, you, you know, know it, it just doesn't work like that. And that's exactly what the author tells us. Right. You know? So if okay. any of that made any sense, I yeah. don't know. Well, it did to me when I was saying it. I hope it did. <laughs> okay. okay. Quote, when you give any order to your children, do not reason with them to show that they ought to obey it. Be careful, especially not to offer them any in 
inducement to comply with your wishes by giving them a hope of obtaining some personal advantage, for this would only tend to develop in their heart the germ of selfishness and self-interest. But let them understand that they ought to do it through obedience to your authority because you hold the place of God in their regard and your power is from him, end quote. So I, I think we actually, I mentioned this kind of briefly, like, no bribes. Yeah, no, yeah, you don't. Yeah, you, if you, you don't, do that, little Timmy, mommy will give you, you know, a candy. Yeah, if you behave here in Walmart, we're, I'll get you a nice ice cream. Yeah. You know, like no, no bribes. They yeah. have to behave because they have to behave, not because they're going to benefit from it in some way. Yeah, and you know what's funny about that is I had a mother just quickly say to me, we were talking about our kids and what they're giving up for Lent, and she was telling me that one of her kids or somebody had said, it wasn't this mother, it's another mother said, well, so-and-so said that for Lent she's going to be nice to everyone or something. And then her husband said, one of her kids tried that, and her husband said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you give up something. You're not going to say you're going to do something that you already should be doing anyways. <laughs> you know, like, you're no, not in this house. You know, and I thought, wow, that's pretty, uh, Yeah. you know, because sometimes you'd be like, oh, yeah, my kid's going to be nice to everybody. But no, you're supposed, you're to, be supposed nice. to be nice to everybody. Like, yeah. so I just thought that was pretty, uh, pretty profound there. Okay, uh, we got one little bit left. I'm going to try to sneak it in here and then this chapter will be finished. Unless you had anything else on that point. Nope. Okay. So this is the last little bit before the end of the chapter. Chapter. Quote, Remember obedience honorable in their eyes by accustoming them to take a right view of your authority and recommend it by the gravity of your conduct and your fidelity in accomplishing the law of God. Teach them that obedience is the condition of man here below, that you as well as they are bound to obey God, the church, the laws, your husband, and that obedience alone will make them capable hereafter of commanding others, end quote. Right. End of chapter. So, I mean, it, it, this is this, it's mentioned this a couple of times in the chapter, that obedience, teaching your child obedience is probably the greatest gift you can give your child. Yes, yeah. Right, so it says there, you know, obedience, what, in this life? Well, and also capable hereafter of when they have to command others. Right. And it said, so basically, um, you teach a child um, obedience. What you're doing is you're actually creating a great leader. Mm -hmm. you're, yeah. you're, you're creating a child who can be a leader in, in all kinds of aspects. You know, yeah. whether it's, you know, a house, whether it's to be the mother or the father, you know, a country, of a company, of whatever. Mm -hmm. Right, or just even a manager at a store, or even a manager at a store. <laughs> like, know. and actually, I'm going to tell you. They're speaking of that. Um, they offer in colleges managerial courses. Yeah, and they say that's something that cannot be, be taught. taught. No, I don't think so. Right. So either you have what the it? ability to be a manager and to be a leader, or you don't. It's not something that you can sign yourself up to the local college, and and. Um, well, I taught think, how to do. What I think is, is it can be taught, but it has to be taught from birth. It has to be taught. It has taught. to be taught all the way throughout their lives. They can't right. just go you along can, a certain way. You can't just take a course. In college, now that you're 20, whatever, and say, I'm going to learn to be a manager. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, so if, if you want your child to be great leader, mm -hmm. and I, when I say great leader, I don't mean like president of the United States. I just mean like even the leader of his own household. Yeah. Or the leader of, you know, the uh, to be, you know, the the captain of the team or, yeah. you know, like whatever it takes. Those kids that are those people yeah. were taught obedience. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's obedience that teaches that skill. Mm -hmm. So you learn your place on the ladder and you you know how the ladder functions and, and, and how not only how to be obedient but to demand obedience. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just... Uh, and that's what we want. Like, I mean, in general speaking, um, Catholics do usually rise above other people. You know, mm -hmm. like, um, it's not, and I mean, we don't do this to be prideful wow. and be like, you know, okay. But, you know, if you learn the virtues and you learn how to work and you learn obedience, when you go out to take your spot in the light in, in places, you find very quickly you're the manager of the situation. Mm -hmm. Like you will get put in charge. Mm -hmm. You know, you will, you have a, a sound way of thinking about you. 
Yeah. And right? people and, pick up on that. And people pick up on that. And then, you know, here you are. Like, this is that's how you raise good, sound children. Right. To be good, functioning adults. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... So that's the end of the chapter. And next time we'll be back, uh, chapter 23 is the education of grown, grown-up children. Ooh, grown-up children. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Everybody's headache. Yeah. <laughs> to deal with the it. mess that you've created. Yeah. <laughs> how do I undo this? <laughs> how, do I undo, how do I undo all my mistakes? Well, yeah. we're going to find out. We're going to read gonna the find chapter. Out Maybe we, we didn't make any mistakes. Yeah, I doubt it. But <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave it there, and we hope you all have a very blessed week. Um, may our Lord bless you and our Lady guide you always. And St. Teresa, Teresa, pray for us. Mm-hmm.